The thickness at the edge is basically like about a molecule. Right. You're going to if be it's going to, Yeah, I know, but I'm trying to. Why does anyone need 16 knives and what is all the fuss about knives? I'm Urvashi. 17. 17. I'm Urvashi. This is Roger. And oh. we're going to walk you through a bunch of different knife things. This is the one that, this is called a paring knife. You can see that the shape, it's got a very short blade, about three inches. It's um, pointed on the end. And when that is so that when you use that, this point, you can cut things very easily. Mm -hmm. You can take this knife and take an apple and draw this knife towards your thumb and peel an apple. It's uh, very, what? It's more agile. It has a right? lot of dexterity. Yeah, and, and you just have more control over it because yeah. it's smaller. Yeah. Got it. And most knives, you'll tend to want to hold by the blade. Right. Yeah. Yep. There's no reason to hold the knife like this. Whoops. Like a shovel. This while you're cutting a cucumber. Right. And there's no reason to hold the knife like this unless you're going to stab somebody. Don't do that. I won't. All right, next one. Okay, so this is called a six inch utility knife. Okay. Whoa, oh, there it goes. This is a six inch utility knife. It, uh, the blade is six inches long instead of three, but other than that, you'll notice it's pretty well shaped like a parry knife. And this you would tend to cut with like this. And it, um, it's utility. It yeah. has a lot of different jobs that you can do with it. It's a very handy knife to have around. Okay, so then we have this knife that looks quite the same, okay? It's got basically the same shape as a utility knife. Is that showing now? Let's get it out here. Same shape as the utility knife, okay? Except that the edge is serrated. Where these other two knives, the edge is perfectly, or not perfectly straight, but the edge is straight. This one has, let me get it up here. You can see it, the little notches in it. It's called serrated. This knife works incredibly well to cut tomatoes. Yep. And soft fruit. Yes, yeah. yes. Because it's like a little saw, and it's a very sharp saw. But it uh, for tomatoes, it works a lot better than this. Then we have this, which is also just a paring knife. It's got a straight edge and a square edge on it, rather than the... And for fruit especially and things like that, this works really well. So sometimes when I use the difference between these two paring knives, uh -huh. it's the same difference between a santoku and a chef, chef knife, chef's knife. Uh -huh. This one, because of the pointy tip, you can yeah. rock it. This yeah. one is much better for thin precision slices. Yep. It's getting kind of crowded over there. What's going to happen is you're going to pick all those up and you're going to cut yourself. Yeah. Because somebody yeah. is clumsy. I've been cooking since I was 14. I've cut myself three times in my whole life. That's three so, more than I See, have. this is why we do these videos, because when your wife is competent, you don't get very many opportunities to tell her how to do something. So this is his opportunity to do it. Yeah. This one... I've never understood the use for that one. This is a, a uh, carving knife. Oh, no you wonder. You use this to carve your turkey with. Okay. This is for fork in it. Yeah. Great big long strokes. Yep. Okay. And it's uh, the same way. This is like a saw. So when you go to carve your turkey, you don't push down through right. it. You, you saw draw it across it. and the piece of turkey flops over. This one is another carving knife. I love, love this one. Love this one. Yes, this one is very nice carving knife. And this is... This is where this this is hard enough to hold an edge, soft enough to be able to resharpen, and it's also not brittle. This bends quite easily. Anyway, this is another carving knife. This has got these notches in it that you can see right there. The notches. What that does is that keeps the meat from sticking to it with a vacuum. If the meat sticks to it as you draw it through the meat, then it hits this little thing, air gets under it, and as you slice it, the meat will tend to just fall off of what you're cutting. Like I use things. this for carving ham uh, and you know cutting like a large brisket or something goes through like butter. It's amazing. Yeah, we can look at a santoku. Mm, my favorite. This is a santoku, and it's a Japanese knife, knife shape, mm -hmm. and it's very good for cutting things. Although generally you want to push through it as you cut it or draw it from the point like this when you cut it or push through rather than a uh, chef's knife and because it has knife. it has a straight edge it's not as useful uh, as a chef's knife could be if you're rock cutting like if you're cutting through herbs yeah, or something like this that. is made for drawing through right. things or 
thin, Push precise cuts. Things. This is its bigger brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you'll notice that this one also has the um, gouges alongside the edge to allow it to release meat when you slice it through meat. I think it's a difference between a six or a seven or a, and a nine inch. Um, I have big hands for a woman, you know, my hands are pretty big. Uh, I still find this smaller one a lot easier. Uh, so the size that you get, it, it really, I think it depends more on how it feels in your hand rather than what it is you're cutting, to be honest, for me anyway. Yeah, and we had, we've had this one for a long, long time. Yeah. And we were in, I believe it was Sir Latab one day, and, and they had come out with this one, and I saw it, and I thought, that's Urbishi. Yeah. That's her knife. Yep. And so I bought it for her and she's loved it ever since. I love it. It's one of my favorites. It's another Japanese shaped knife. You'll notice that it does have the release on it. What this is for is, so this is to tip up on this point and then come down and chop. If you were going to chop cilantro, which is what I use this for all the time, or any other herbs, then you, you can sit there and chop. Now you don't chop, you saw. You know, so you're actually doing this, and that it's not that pronounced. It looks like you're doing this, but you let it slide just a little bit every time, yep, so that it cuts. It. So, what else have we got in the block? Bread oh, knife, another chef a knife. chef's knife, yeah. This is the, the American standard chef's knife, you know. This is what everybody, all the big chefs, this is what you used to see them doing, and what this is for is quite similar to the Nijiri in if you're going to chop something you've got this rocking motion and it rocks right up on a point and comes back down so it rocks easier than the Santoku but um, it's for cutting bigger things if you wanted to chop onions or a big wanted, watermelon actually yeah, yeah. cantaloupes watermelons it's, uh -huh. it's got the length to go yeah, straight this is, into one this is pretty utilitarian yep. there's one more knife in the block and that is that whoa this one invaluable yes. invaluable knife oh this is a wonderful knife um some people use these for carving turkeys but what this is really is is a bread knife yeah okay this is for cutting bread and it's serrated on the edge and so especially like thick crust hard breads cutting with this and sawing through your bread this works very nice. Remember to saw, not cut down the way that um, you might. Yeah, especially with bread. bread because yeah. bread you'll crush. You'll crush it. These are uh, shun shears. These are as sharp as their knives. These are incredible. If you want to cut cilantro leaves, this will just slice right through them. Poultry shears, it'll cut through a carpet. Yeah, it will really do that good. too. Darling, show them how to take it apart. That's the thing oh, I love about okay. it. Okay. When you do get kitchen shears, this turns up until it gets lined up and then it comes apart. And then they just go back together and turn into shears. All okay, right. so this little knife, is, I've always kind of been intrigued by the shape. I have no idea what it does, never use it. It's just a parry knife. Oh, we have three paring knives. Yes. Okay. And you could use this just like a parry knife with on the point. This one is actually a boning knife. A deboning well, knife. Deboning knife, yes. I guess you wouldn't put bones in with it. But anyway, you'll so see that it comes to a very sharp or thin point. The point is quite thin if you can see. You probably can't. But anyway, so if you want to take some meat off of a bone, you can cut right down the edge of the bone and cut the meat off of yep. it. Okay, this is obviously whoops, the meat cleaver that used to run out and uh, chase people down the street with. What else would you use it for? Exactly. Why does it have that hole in it? Do we know? Hang it up. Oh, okay. So it'll yeah, hang it makes on the wall yeah, yeah, yeah. on a nail. Yep. But if you get a roast and it hasn't been cooked and you want to cut through it, you put this down there and this will slice through it. Like It's very nice for doing that with. Okay, and this one is kind of fun. This is, you know, this is what they chop stuff up with in the yep. Chinese. This is a Chinese chopping knife. It won't hardly fit in the camera. Anyway. Or the drawers, but. Or know, the drawer, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It uh, doesn't get used very much, but gosh, it's nice to have. So when I first bought, I think I mentioned that I bought three knives. 
as a set. Shun sells you a paring knife, a six inch utility knife, and a chef's knife. So they, these three knives come as a set. And for most everybody in reality, if you're not a tool geek like I am, this is all the knives you really need. It'll cut anything you want to cut. I have a link for it, an affiliate link for it in the description. So look at it. This is what I've been linking on the blog as well as on, on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So we have yes. 17 knives. Uh -huh. um, used to be heated all the cooking. And then uh, I started the food blog and the man has not been allowed to cook in 10 years now. So now it's become my knife blog, even though he bought all of them. That's how it works in this yes. house. Let me show you the ones that I don't use and we'll get them out of the way. I never use a paring knife. I know a lot of people do. I don't. It's too small. It's not worth it to me. Definitely a second paring knife. I have no idea why we even have it. In fact, I'm going to leave it out. Um, I don't use... What is this one for you said? That's a carving knife. Yeah, carving. I don't do yeah. that. Somebody else is going to have to do nope, that. Nope. It's got to be in a big enough right. slot. I know. Okay. I never use this general utility knife. Oh, yeah. No. I love a Santoku, a good Santoku, but I don't use it since I have a smaller one. So this one goes away. I never use this chef's knife and I think it's largely because it is so huge and it just really just doesn't fit my hand. So I never use this one. By the way, that is not a big chef's knife. I know, but it's too big. They for come me. like 10 and 12 like inches. It. I used to love this until I got the Santoku. I never use any of these cleavery things, so I'm going to move them out of the way. That's that because she doesn't debone her chicken. Right. So here are the ones that I personally use a lot. I use this for everything. So this is my first go-to knife. In fact, now that I'm looking at this, honey, what I really need is a knife block that just has the ones that I use. That can oh. be yours. Oh. All right. So this one I use a lot. This is a Santoku. It's a six inch or a seven inch, whatever the smaller one is. I use that for everything. There is no better knife than this one for cutting tomatoes. Just no better knife than a serrated knife. And the other thing is, it uh, it's not something you can sharpen. It doesn't need sharpening very often, so I don't have to go and say, Roger, can you please sharpen these for me? He's gonna do a video on how to sharpen in a minute. I use this for the few times in our household that we have bread, uh, invaluable. And then I use this at Thanksgiving or whatever. So basically, <laughs> of these 17 knives, my go-tos are these two. The Santoku and the serrated tomato knife. Those are mine. I have knives that have single uses. I don't, because I lose things and they get messy. Okay, so 17 different knives. What makes a good knife? What kind of material? And what each of those are used for? We're going to do a few more videos that you should keep an eye out for. So if you subscribe to this channel and hit notifications, you'll get notifications of those. We're going to show you how to, how to use this steel that we haven't talked through. And when I say we, I mean him. Uh, and then we're going to show you how to use a whetstone. And what is the other thing? There's one that's a small belt sander. A belt and sander. A whetstone and there's a diamond home. All and a steel. We're going to talk about a steel. Yes. Okay, so I'm Urvishi. I'm Roger. Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful.